Opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Shaw Cable Systems or of the station. Through our access policy, we provide the opportunity for community groups and individuals to express their points of view. Hi everybody and welcome to The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. We're talking about football in Manitoba. I'm Scott Taylor and my co-host is John Mackey, the technical director of Football Manitoba, the quarterback's coach at the University of Manitoba, the quarterback's coach for the under-18 yep. program. Yep. Um, is there any other teams you're coaching? Uh, basketball, Eclos Saint-Germain. That's right. The little the girls team. Basketball coaching. Yep. Uh, we have a big, big, busy show today. Um, and we have some some tremendous midget football players on our show today. And that's that's right. if there's a theme, that would be it. But it's not really the theme. But it's just it's just the way things worked out with our producer Rebecca Horan, who made sure that we got some midget football players in today. We have um, John and Jeremy with us on the show. John, of course, was the coach of the year in the football league. He's a midget coach of the year. Midget coach of the year, and he's got a great ring Not, yeah. from heavy metal design. <laughs> heavy metal design. Absolutely. And then Charlene Mash Hadlow is going to be on the show to talk about the national women's camp, which starts March second. She looks good. Oh, she looks she's like she's shape. ready to play. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. But she was one of the great athletes out of the U of M. And yeah, back in a day long before you. And she's still playing football and you're done. <laughs> Think about that for a second. She played basketball at the U of M from 87 to 90. And Whoa. she's still playing football at a level that's high enough that she could go to the world championship. You know what? I, I didn't know that because I have yeah. refused to ask Charlene her age just because I'm, of the stuff that she does I wouldn't ask her age. On, I just asked her when field. she played. But <laughs> you kind of just... Uh, through that number yeah, out there. It's pretty remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. It's She's a remarkable. fantastic football player, and we wish her the best of luck Absolutely. in the Nationals. And then, and then we have the TSN highlight boy. I like this. Justin Roman, his dad, Wayne Mann, um, are gonna, both going to be on the show because Justin is a defensive back with the Eastman Raiders from the Manitoba Midget League. Mm -hmm. And he, he picked off this remarkable interception, runs for TD. It's just a great, great highlight. It's fourth right now on the TSN Advil Highlight of the that's Month. That's right. And if you win the Highlight of the Month, you win 25000 bucks. <laughs> wow. So I, I get out there and vote for, uh, for Justin, yeah. and we'll talk to him today. So it's a busy show. I'm excited. Um, and, and in a couple of weeks, you're actually going to do an interview. Oh, really? Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. That's what the rumor is out there. It's going to be a surprise. Yeah, it's going to be a surprise for you, too. When we come <laughs> back, we're going to talk uh, midget football to start it off with uh, Jeremy and then John Withus. Uh, stay with us. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. <laughs> Welcome back to The Huddle. Scott Taylor and Keto's back. <laughs> okay, Keto, you get 30 seconds to sell the camp. We're only going to talk about the camp for 30 seconds. All right. So finish first football, go. Uh, if you want to be a pro, come train with the pros. Plain and simple. Yep, finish first football going on at the uh, soccer complex at the University of Manitoba mm -hmm. right now, and the kids are out running. Mm -hmm. And we talked to Carl Volley, and he said that uh, sometimes it's hard to teach kids how to run. It is. It's hard to teach yourself how to run. run. <laughs> it, is, it is a skill, though, isn't it? Yeah, like sure. running, it, running is not like walking, mm -hmm. although... They have to teach models how to walk. I mean, you got to teach football yeah. players how to run. Yeah. Because there is a way to gain speed. Yeah. And it's and it's really simple. It's just the quickest or the fastest person is the person who uses the less movement. When you use a lot of movement, you're wasting uh, time. And basically... So all of this stuff when I'm running doesn't get me any faster? No, it doesn't. You know, you look at Usain Bolt, guy's just running like this and he's yeah. relaxed. He's just looking like I'm the fastest man in the world. And he's just so calm. And, and that's what we're trying to teach. What's your best 40 time? 4-4. Four, four. Ouch. Speaking of you, who is Keto Pobla? Where'd you come from? <laughs> Tell me your life story. Well, similar to Carl's. Um, we were both born in Montreal, raised in Florida. And your cousins. Carl's your cousin. Yeah, basically Carl my Volney, brother. number 29. Yeah, Carl Volney, number 29. Uh, basically brothers. We've, we've been raised with each other since five, six years old. Went through high school, went to Michigan. You both went to Central Michigan? Central Michigan, You were yep. both Chippewas? Yep, under Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly, who, who brought us both in there, then Bush Jones came in. We won a couple championships with them. And then uh, Danny Nose is there now. And from... And that's the Mid-American Conference? The Mid Mac. Yep, the MAC Conference, yep. And uh, yeah, now we're up here trying to get a great cup. 
Now, when you were drafted, you weren't really in the draft. You were in the supplemental draft. Yeah. How did that happen? Do you know? <laughs> they didn't believe I was Canadian. <laughs> 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 well, are you? I am Canadian. I, I'm all Canadian, man, and I'm I'm proud to be back, man. And that's why one of the reasons why we're doing this whole entire uh, program is because we 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 were fortunate to train down in the states, and we saw the difference of the, uh, the off-season training program and stuff like that, and we saw that where we could, uh, I guess, help in and and building up a Canadian athlete. When when you train for a football season coming up. Um, what's the key for your training? Is it speed or is it the weight room? Both. I would say a mixture of both. But the thing is, the, like you see a lot of guys who go into the weight room, get big, look good for the girls, and then they get in the field and they're just all stiff and they don't really know how to move. And um, our whole entire philosophy is just when you're working out, you're building up your armor and you have to be able to work with your armor. You have to be able to understand how your body works, how your armor is feeling. And that's from the transfer from the weight room onto the field. And that's the aspect that we cover is building the athlete for what he's putting on from the weight room. Instead of just field. a big guy who looks good at the beach. Exactly, man. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of ugly guys who played good football. That's very true. It's look true. at Terrell Suggs, right? Yeah, he isn't pretty, like, but he can uh, play. He, yeah, he's ugly. <laughs> All linebackers are ugly, right? You got to go catch balls over the middle. That's you better true. not make them angry. <laughs> so, are you going to play wide out or inside receiver this year? Do you know? I'm uh, not exactly sure. You know, I, honestly, I just want to be on the field, and hopefully, I can contribute a lot more than I did last year. Good luck. Thank you. Do well, Keto Pobla. Uh, it's called Finish First Football. They're out at the uh, soccer complex of the University of Manitoba, and will be out for uh, a few more weeks yet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then the training camp starts in June, and suddenly we got a brand new season. Yes, sir. It'll be great. Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Keto Pobla. When we come back, we got plenty more football on the huddle. Community created on Shaw TV. Hi, I'm Carl Volney, running back for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. You're watching the huddle on Shaw TV. I can't get enough of this magazine. Welcome back to the huddle. It's just so good. Um, uh, I'm Scott Taylor, and I have another guest, and, and I'm really pleased that he, he finally found the time to join us. <laughs> Jeremy with us from the Transcona Nationals Midgets, and you guys had a pretty good season last year, and you should be congratulated. What, the first time that the Transcona Midgets have made the playoffs in it's a been long a, time? Yeah, it's been a few years since we made it there. So tell us about the season. Uh, it was We finished 4-4 four and four with the during the season. We... There were a few games where we kind of fell apart late in the game and lost it in the end, but we were able to pull it together, and we played the Greendale Falcons in the quarterfinals, and we lost to them during the regular season, but we ended up beating them in the playoffs, and then we went on and we lost to the Nomads in the semis. Okay, you played running back and a linebacker. Yeah. Did you ever come off the field? Because um, I'm I, sure you played special teams too. Yeah, I played. <laughs> I was I was on punt return, like punt and punt return, and kickoff return, but I... I came off the field for kickoffs. Wow, good. That, the coach is a good guy, huh? Yeah. Gives you a little little break. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah. By the way, the coach is his dad. Yeah. <laughs> so you're going into your final year, but you've played now. This will be 11 seasons yep. with the Transcona Nationals. Yep. Well, next year will be 12. Have I got that, those no, numbers right? Next, next year will be your 11. 11th year. Yeah. So you started as a Terminator at age seven in this organization. Yep. Tell us about your trip through the Nationals. It. It's been great. I still remember when I was really young, a bunch of my friends on the team, they had their brother, they all had brothers that played with my older brother. So <clears throat> we'd all go to the games and we'd all hang out, run around and play at the Nationals Club and during the games. And it's just, I've you know, made so many friends and met so many new people at the club and it's just been great. So you are a Transcona National for life? Yeah. Even though you plan to continue to play football after this season? Yeah. So where do you go to school? I go to the College Pierre at Trudeau. So you've got to find another place to play other than a high school. Yeah. Um, what are your plans? What's your goal? Well, hopefully I'll go to play at a university somewhere, hopefully. If not, I'll try out for rifles or mm -hmm. if, at the very least I'll play major football. For somebody? Yeah. You're going to continue to play football? Yeah, no matter what I'm playing. It doesn't matter where it's on. Um, you're an all-star this year? Yeah. So you had a pretty good year. You've got a yeah, bit of a resume good. for people. Yeah, What's your size? Um, I'm like 5'9". 205-ish. Yeah, for there. 17. That's not bad. You ready to play 10 questions? Sure. It's our favorite part of the show. 
It's time for 10 questions. And I love to do this with all the high school and midget guys. We'll start off with what's your favorite TV show? Uh, I'd have to say The Big Bang Theory. You and me both, right there. All right, that's the best show on TV. I love it. Uh, your favorite movie. Who do you like best? Uh, what character? I don't know. Sheldon's pretty funny. Yeah, Penny. Your favorite movie of all time? Um, I think The Green Iron Gang. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. That's a good one. That, you're the first to give that answer. Favorite music, favorite style? Um, I like country music. Yay! A country fan. Make sure you listen to NCI every morning. Favorite entertainer? Um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big Adam Sandler fan as well. I like him. He's, pretty, he's a funny guy. See, I expected Kenny Chesney to come out of there, or maybe Toby Keith. No. No. Adam Sandler. Most influential person in your life? Um, I don't know. I, my dad and my brother have both been great influences for me. And both football people. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, your best or your favorite subject in school? Um, I'd say math courses and stuff. Like I like. Well, you can do math, math. You'll be set. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be able to go to U of M. Um, what do you like to do when you're away from football? Uh, I play hockey a little mm -hmm. bit too. I like with? To play hockey. Um, well, it's just I play with my brother and my sister's boyfriend, so it's just kind of pick up hockey. But cool. Your favorite sport other than football, I bet it's hockey. Yeah, it's hockey. Absolutely. Your favorite athlete? Um, I'd say probably Ray Lewis because. He's a he's a linebacker. He's a linebacker and and he's and he amazing. wears the greatest helmet in all of pro football. Yeah, that's the best face mask in all of pro football. Finally, the best question of all, and the one we all wait for: Betty or Veronica? Uh, I guess Betty. I don't know. Okay, we've had one Veronica in this show and one Betty. John, thanks. Thank you. No, you're Jeremy. Yeah, John's Jeremy. coming up. Yeah. John's coming next. We've just had Jeremy with us, the running back and linebacker for the Transcona Nationals. His dad, John, the coach of the year in the midgets, is coming up next. This is the huddle community created on Shaw TV. Excuse me, ma'am. Would you like to have my seat? A message from the Foundation for a Better Life. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the huddle. Scott Taylor along with uh, the head coach of the Transcona Nationals Midgets and the coach of the year in the Manitoba Midget Football League, John Withus. And congratulations, first of all. Well, thank you. That's, that's a great honor. Appreciate it. Um, I, I know that when I ask you this question, the answer is probably going to be we had good players. But why is it that you won coach of the year, and why did the Transcona Nationals have such a great season? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons, right? Uh, number one, I think... Um, uh, we, we were a young team again, right? We had a lot of young players. We had a lot of 15-year-olds um, starting, which at midget football is, you know, it's a little uncommon to have that many as mm -hmm. a, a starting player. So <clears throat> combined with the amount of players we had and the, the quality of players we had and their willingness to learn, uh, coupled with the fact that we had a great coaching staff, right? I mean, that's not an honor I take by myself. I think that's a uh, testament to all the coaches on the football team, right? Uh, that's one person can't do that alone, right? I mean, it, it takes a group effort and, you know, you guys did a fantastic job, so. What's it like coaching your son? I guess it's okay because um, he's a good player, but it, well, it's, it, it, it's, it can't be an easy thing to do. Uh, it's not, um, and it, my, what I personally try to do is I try to, to uh, leave the coaching to him as an individual to other coaches. Uh, right. I usually take a step back and, you know, and I let the others deal with him, whether it's good or bad, and, um, you know, I take the support from the other coaches as far as that goes. Yeah, I know. I coach my kid in both hockey and baseball, and it's it's not an easy thing to do. No, it's not. It's 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 a tough way to have to go to work. Um, this team, tell us a little bit about this team and what we've got to look forward to next year with this Transcona team. If you had a lot of young players, it means there's well, probably a lot of guys back. Well, we did, and um, uh, I mean, from year to year, it's always a challenge, right, because you, you're, you're never guaranteed as to how many players are coming back. I mean, you always get a few that drop off for various reasons, right? Um, Commit what commitment wise in uh, school or whatever sure. else, right? So if if we get the the core group of kids back, yeah, um, we probably have uh, 22, 24 kids eligible to come back wow. and play football. Um, having said that, I mean we got some good kids coming up from the, the our bantam teams, and um, you know hopefully we can go through this season with maybe one or two 15 year olds starting as opposed to eight, right? So that in itself is going to help us become much more competitive and. You know, we'll see what happens. Right? There has been some talk of, uh, of raising the age of midget football. Right. And I wondered what your thoughts were on that, plus um, why it's becoming so much more difficult to, to keep the numbers in midget football as the high school league expands every year. 
Well, uh, you know, of course, that is a challenge, right? Uh, with the number of high schools uh, coming out, uh, uh, as far as the midget league itself goes, yeah, the the number, the roster numbers, some are some are in good shape, some others are not in such good shape. Um, uh, there's always been that bit of a competition between high school and midget football. Midget football is a good football league. Sure it is. Um, we have very talented football players in this mm -hmm. league. Uh, we got players in this league that go on to play rifles on a regular basis. Guys are going to the Bisons. Um, last year, a great example, Jordan Metal. I'm sure you know Jordan. Yes, He's playing absolutely. McGill University, starting offensive lineman. So there's a lot of talent in the league. Um, as far as the numbers go, I think it's just a matter of the, the clubs themselves and the coaching staffs around to um, do their homework. Um, they have club teams. I mean, we have Bantam coming out of Transcona. All of the clubs have Bantam teams and minor teams. It's up to the coaching staffs of the Midget League to get the involvement to those younger players and, and encourage them to come play midget football with the club teams. What can we expect out of the Transcona Nationals next season? I'm hoping to be even more competitive than we were last year, right? I mean, I mean that's always the goal, right? Um, you know, as Jeremy indicated earlier. Have you got your core position settled pretty much? Do you know who you're going to have at, say, quarterback, middle linebacker? Um, the, the, um, the spots that you need to have your offensive line, are you in good shape? I think we're in pretty good shape. Again, uh, it's, you know, I mean, I'm going through the process now of talking to all the kids to see who's coming back. So, yeah, I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, you know, we've got our quarterback coming back, Adam Gorzin. He's yep. 15. You know, he had a good year. He learned a lot last year. Um, you know, Jeremy's coming back, of course, and we got, you know, we got a lot of, a lot of quality players coming back, you know, that I've already talked to. So, uh, is it looking good for us? Absolutely. Um, key is to be competitive, right? Absolutely. And, and, and that's what we want to accomplish. And, you know, hopefully Make we the can. Make playoffs, right? We, get yourself one, a chance to win. Number one, get into the playoffs. And number two is be competitive and, and see if we can uh, make it all the way to the finals this year and see what happens from there. But Now you got to show off your ring. Because <laughs> my friend Corey from Heavy Metal Design has designed a dandy. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, Coach of the Year ring. Just hold it up to this camera to our to my left. There you are. And thanks to Corey Ason and uh, Heavy Metal Design for designing another tremendous ring for the Coach of the Year. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you. Well done. Uh, John Wethus, the head coach of the Transcona Nationals Midgets, the Coach of the Year in the Midget Football League. We've got lots more football to talk about. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Scott Taylor back on the huddle here on Shaw TV, and my guest is um, uh, a pretty frequent guest on radio. But uh, is this your first trip to the TV studio? I it think it is. is. Charlene Mash Hadlow. I remember when you played basketball at the University of Manitoba, mm -hmm. and that was actually quite a long time ago, but you wouldn't know it in your case. You certainly wouldn't mind. <laughs> but um, mm -hmm. you look like you were just playing yesterday. Well, thank you very much. You're off to national camp, and this is the National Women's uh, football camp. It's women's tackle football, remember. It's not lingerie league. Mm -hmm. This is real football. There is a national team in Canada, and you were on the last one. Yes, I was. So it's back to camp. Tell us a bit about your last experience and then what you expect this time. Fantastic experience. It was three years ago in uh, Sweden, and uh, we had a, a variety of players here from Manitoba that represented uh, our province, and we ventured off to Sweden with a variety of other players across Canada, and we finished with a, uh, s a silver performance so well and a loss to the United States they're pretty good aren't they? yeah they were pretty exceptional and but it's uh, nice when you can you can draw from 325 million people that's right. somebody can play that's right so what's gonna happen in the next couple of weeks well uh, we have a, a good couple of weeks coming up uh, the out in New Brunswick this weekend on Saturday the Eastern camp will be held with uh, the players from uh, Montreal uh, eastward and then on March 2nd um, in Moose Jaw we will have the Western camp and we'll have members from Manitoba all the way to Alberta participating in that camp. How many from Manitoba? Um, I think there's about 16 of us, 17 of us that are going and... Um, now more than that were invited. I think I think it was almost 20 were invited. Well, I, I, are they all going to go? I think maybe most of them, except for one that I know yeah. of. Um, but it should be great representation from our province for sure. I think it's it's tremendous when you mm. consider the 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 number of players there are across the country, and 19 yes. of them from Manitoba yeah. are getting invited. It's, it's it's a pretty big deal. It says a lot about the football that's played here. Absolutely, the the two programs here in the province are doing exceptionally well. And uh, last summer we were uh, we had a national championship and we performed quite well. Uh, bringing both teams together and representing a province so pretty excited about the level of play. Um, when you talk about women's football internationally um, in your mind as an athlete who came out of basketball and yeah. into football um, where would you stay, say it stands now as compared to three years ago when you went? Oh 
Well, uh, the level of, of play uh, throughout uh, the world is just improving and improving all the time. Um, the loss at the World Championships, I was so impressed with the, the athletes. Uh, you never think that they would be playing football in Sweden and Finland, but they had outstanding teams and outstanding athletes. And it's just pushed us to continue to train hard here in Canada to bring a higher level of game here, but also to represent our country at a higher level. So. Your game is growing in this country too. It sure is. Um, more teams coming. I've heard rumors that that there are going to be more teams added for women's football. Absolutely. It looks like there's some good stuff going down. Uh, some key people uh, that have been involved with uh, football here in Canada for women that are going throughout uh, Canada trying to get uh, more teams, more provinces on board. So the future looks really good. Now, we haven't spent any time talking about you. Mm -hmm. You're a wide receiver. Yes, I am. How did you get into football uh, coming from basketball? Well, uh, this will be my fifth year playing uh, tackle football. I heard there was a, uh, Tannis Wilson uh, was doing a broadcast, um, you know, uh, I think it was on one of the radio stations talking about women's football and that we're trying to start a, a team here in Winnipeg. My dad actually heard it, called me up and said, Char, I think you better check into this because uh, he just knows how competitive I am and I, I enjoy a good challenge. And uh, I started playing uh, back then and haven't stopped. So you've been at it for five years? Yes. Uh, is it getting better? It is, sure has the play improved uh, as as much as I think it has? And I've only gone for a year, but I thought the play from the start of last year to the end of last year in the women's league was incredibly improved. It got better and better and better every time you guys play. It sure is. It's just uh, with with experience, um, uh, coaching, um, getting the higher caliber athletes out and attracting more of these hi higher cal caliber athletes out, the game is going to continue to get better and, and it definitely has. So looking forward to this year for sure. Good luck. Thank you Have very a much. great camp. Thank you. Uh, the national women's, uh, the western portion yes. of the national women's team tryout camp goes in Moose Jaw um, in early March and Charlene Mashadlow will be one of uh, a group of 17 or 18 Winnipeggers who will be taking part in that camp. When we come back, we've got lots more football on the huddle. It's community created on Shaw TV. I touched the ball before I went out, coach. Three. Alex. Good call. Sportsmanship. Pass it on. Yeah, we're back on the huddle. It's Scott Taylor and I have some very special guests because they're big TV stars. Well, at least one of the two is. <laughs> to my far right is Wayne Mann, the DB coach at, uh, for the East Man Raiders, yeah. and his son, Justin, yeah. who is, if you haven't seen it yet, is big time television. Um, he is one of the entries for this month's um, competition on TSN, the Advil highlight of the month, and explain to everybody exactly what your highlight is um, and, and we'll show it while, while you're talking. Uh, it was uh, last year against the Nomads in uh, a semifinal game. And I guess uh, the quarterback, he threw it, it got tipped right up in front of me and then it came up by me, got my hands on it. And Taylor Fast, one of my linebackers, hit the guy out and then I just turned around and I caught the ball. <laughs> it was pretty cool. And you're doing pretty cool right now. You're fourth in the group of 10 heading into the final couple of weeks. Yep. <laughs> so we got to get everybody out to vote for Justin Mann and his tremendous interception, yep. um, and, which is sitting number four um, for the Advil Highlight of the Month. Now, the big thing about the Highlight of the Month is, is you don't win like 50 cents. You don't win like a Jets jersey or something. No. You, this is a big prize. Yeah, $25,000. Yeah, you can play a lot of football yeah. at $25,000. Um, I want to talk more about, to you guys about uh, Justin's football career. And I know um, you weren't a football player. No. But I'm you're a coach play. now. Yeah. Um, do you enjoy that? Oh, I love it. Yeah, the kids are great. <laughs> I learn more from them than they do from me. It's <laughs> <laughs> great stuff. So yeah. you're coaching the Raiders, and you're playing for the Raiders, but you didn't yeah. start with the Eastman Raiders, even though you live in Bozes, you're now. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your background. I, I started with the Greendale Falcons at Tournament, Terminator, mm -hmm. and after, I think, one year there, or two, uh, we went. One year, yeah. yeah, we played one year with the Falcons. Then went to the Eagles. East played, Side Eagles. Yeah, East Side Eagles. Played a couple of years there. Went to the Nationals, and then came to Eastman. So yeah. you you don't have a, a career, um, um, oh like like say, uh, Aaron Rodgers who played for just one team. You've bounced around the league like <laughs> like yeah. Brett Favre did. Yeah, <laughs> you've been bouncing around. So. What was the most enjoyable time? Is it now or, or when you were younger playing? 
Because I know you love to play football. Yeah, I, I just pretty much loved to play football wherever I was. I just liked it. What do you like best about it? And I'll bet you say it's the hitting. Yeah, the hitting was pretty good. But I, I'm more a guy that was catching the ball more, I think. So, so now you play defensive back, but yeah. your dad says you could play receiver. Yeah, yeah, I played a bit receiver in like my younger ages, but I everyone just I guess thought I was a better DV, so I just went DV. And you can punt too. Yeah, I punted this year. Started punting, I think. Uh, yeah. Third game in, I think you took over punting for yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us about this team. How good are they? How good will they uh, be? They're pretty good. We went to the finals last year against mm -hmm. the Nomads. We lost to the Nomads. We had seven and one record. That was pretty good. Uh, yeah, we just lost to the Nomads in the championship, yep. but this year we we're losing most of our starting de defense, that so it's going to be. But yeah. Justin's back. No, no actually, he's, done too. he's done. So are you going to play too. major? Uh, uh, he's you, trying out for rifles now. Are and, you yeah. great? And, Excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, that's terrific. The rifles yeah. need uh, all the good yeah. players they can find. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you, so you lose Justin. Yeah. This is going to be tough this year. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we got. Like two starting D linemen, our, our one D lineman and one uh, halfback coming back. The rest wow. we lost. <laughs> Coach, I don't yeah. envy you. And I don't envy you as a dad right now because now the <laughs> best part of this program every week is we get to ask the high school midget players 10 questions. You ready for 10 questions? Yep. Okay, no Justin, idea. number one, your favorite TV show? I'm going to say The Walking Dead. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like it. Your favorite movie of all time? Uh, Fast and the Furious. Which one? Uh, six is coming. Yeah, that one would be pretty cool. I just have the shakes waiting for six. <laughs> I'm just fired up for Fast yeah. and Furious six. The, your favorite style of music? Uh, rock. Alternative? Classic? Uh, classic rock, yeah. Uh, yeah. You look like a classic rock. <laughs> <laughs> um, your favorite entertainer of all time? Entertainer. Uh, hmm. Not Led Zeppelin if you're a classic rock guy? Yeah, Led Zeppelin's pretty cool, yeah. yeah. I could say him, yeah. I, I like Led Zeppelin because they're <laughs> my age. <laughs> the most influential person in your life? My dad. Absolutely. <laughs> Great answer. Your best or your favorite subject in school? Uh, if Jim was, I would say Jim. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I would have to go with like social studies and stuff then. Okay. Um, what do you like to do when you're not playing football? Uh, I just do every sport at school that I can. <laughs> Outstanding. Um, your favorite sport other than football? Uh, I do track and field lots at mm -hmm. school. I train lots for that. So, so that's yeah. why you're a DB too? Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like speed. Your favorite athlete of all time? Uh, I would uh, Wes Welker on the Patriots. Wow. <laughs> that's the first one. <laughs> it's Patriots. <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> and final, the question of the day, which is always the question of the day, Betty or Veronica? Veronica. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask why. There's our 10 <laughs> questions with Justin Mann. Wayne, you survived. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congrats, Coach. Uh, this has been great stuff. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks. Wayne and Justin Mann, remember to vote for them for the Advil highlight of the month. They're certain, currently number four. Yeah. Got to get them to number one. It's a $25,000 first prize. So we're going to do a little politicking here. Get out and vote for uh, Justin Mann's interception. When we come back, we've got plenty more on The Huddle. It is The Huddle, and it's community created on Shaw TV. That was a busy show. It was. Yeah. Transcona. Let's go on. Transcona. Yeah. Transcona Day. I love those national guys. Yeah, it's uh, always good to see John and Jeremy with us on the show. And, of course, uh, the Mans were here. They were fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Got to love that football out in East, man. Oh, yeah. It's really getting better, isn't it? I really think so. Hey, well, that's where Andrew Harris started his football. That's right. right. He started in East yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Jamie Peters has done a whale of a job with that Steinbeck program. Oh, yeah. The Steinbeck Sabres are single-A champions this year. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's, he's done, done a, a phenomenal job. job. Sure has. And Charlene Mashadlow, um, who's always charming and wonderful and yeah. smart and bright, and it's just great to have her on the program. It's, she's, it's awesome. she's done such a great job with our radio show on Streets 104.7 mm -hmm. that it's nice to have her on the TV. Yeah, absolutely. Now, are you, are you psyched up for next week? I'm super excited. Because next week, you're going to be the interviewer, not the interviewee. <laughs> hey, I'm excited. Yeah, I think so. Put me in that spot. John Mackey's television career begins in earnest <laughs> next week. You don't want to miss it. This has been a great show this week. Yeah. We'll see you all next week. This is The Huddle, community created on Shaw TV. Goodbye, everybody.